Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's just pray. Father, we bless you. Angelic activities are taking place even now. Ministering on my behalf and on the behalf of everyone watching right now. Causing things to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Even as your truth comes forth, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed right now. And your power is even available to heal and to destroy all the works of darkness. So let it be so that healing takes place even now. As they desire, Lord, they receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We are looking at the role of angels. Praise God. So turn your Bibles with me to Hebrews chapter 2. We, we, we began yesterday looking at this. Hebrews chapter from verse 14. This is uh, talking about angels. It says, are they not all ministering spirits? Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. I, I told you yesterday, I, I told you yesterday that once you were born, on the day you were born, an angel is released with your script. See? So now, that's how you even know that we are getting to the end of the age. You know how? Because we will not get to the end until the last person that was ordained to be born, be born. What does that mean? The last person whose name is in the book of life will be born. Praise <laughs> God. Because he has an assignment to fulfill. So we, <clears throat> we trust the Lord every day. And I told you yesterday, I said, your assignment in life is to locate the things that have been written concerning you. And then you begin to align yourself to it and fulfill them. That is what success is all about in life. Success is not about having all the monies in the world. It is good to have money. Success is not all about, you know, all the, what's it called now, awards you win. It is good to win awards. But that's not what measures success. If you have a lot of money and you are not employing it in the direction or the purpose for which it was given to you, you are not a success. You are a great failure. See? And then it's also wrong for you to sit down in one place and be telling yourself, I wish I have all the money in this world. You know what I would have done? That's nonsense. Listen, begin to do what you are supposed to do today. If you need money, it will be given to you as much as you need. Yeah, but, 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 but I need a lot of money. This is what I'm doing. Maybe you're even a pastor. I, I need a lot of money. Hey, hey, sometimes it's not money you need. The most important thing you need is wisdom. That's why Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That's all you need. Now, what do I mean? Okay. We, we, we want to build a new church. Now, question, is that the wisdom of God to you right now? The moment you are struggling with a project and, and you have, you've done everything you need to do, hey, first things first, go back to the Lord and ask Him, what, what was the origin of this project? Is it the Lord or is it you? Are you trying to compare yourself with someone else? You say, ah, so -so person has a very big church. I, want, I must build a very big church. What if that's not what God has called you to do? See, I told you something. You have that guardian angel for your life. Now, his job is to see that you are protected. His job is to see that no harm comes to you. His job is to see that he creates opportunities for you to do the will of God. So, he is the one that will create opportunity to go to the school that you go to. 
He is the one that will create the opportunity. You know, the, the, you see, the finances and everything. Sometimes people don't understand the activities of angels behind the scene. There's a lot of work going on by angels behind the scene, but we don't know. And because we don't know, we, 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 just, think, we just treat life carelessly. Let me show you something. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Watch this now. He says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Did you see that? It says you have come into an innumerable company of angels. Now hear me. An angel is responsible for your life. And that angel knows that you were an heir or you were born an heir unto salvation. In other words, you were born to receive salvation. You know, I shared with you something last week or, or some weeks ago. I told you something. I said, listen. Jesus didn't come to this world because Adam and Eve sinned. It would be wrong to think that way. You will be limiting the purpose of Jesus to just dying for your sins. He did not come just to die for our sins. That was not even his original purpose. I told you this sometimes. That even if Adam and Eve had not sinned, Jesus would still have come. And so I want to come and do what's it? Because you are limited in your thoughts. You are limited in your understanding. Jesus was already, remember the Bible says, he is called the Lamb of God that was slain. From where? The foundation of the world. So the question is, did Adam and Eve sin from the foundation of the world? Now, when he says the foundation of the world, he's talking about when God laid the foundation of man's existence. When God laid the foundation of the earth, of everything he's going to create. See, he says that's when Jesus was conceived and even slain. So, why was he slain? You, you need to understand something. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'll share with you a few weeks ago, when God says... Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And Jesus was born. And actually the prophecy David spoke about when he says, Lo, I come in a volume of the books. It is written on me. We understand from the book of Hebrews. He was referring to Jesus. So Jesus comes and says, It is written on me in the volume of the books. What volume of the books? The same books that was written from the foundation of the world. So, Jesus came here, and when Jesus came, he said something. He says, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it in abundance. That was the primary mission of Jesus Christ. He came to give us life. See, So, before Adam sinned, Adam, hallelujah, you need to understand this. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And I told you before, Adam and Eve were not in the image and likeness of God. They had, God had started, he made them earthy. They were earth beings. But then God was building them up. He was causing them to grow in obedience with him. And then at a time, Jesus was to come into this world and to give them life. The giving of that life is what would have manifested them, even as it has done now, into the image and likeness of God. Why? Because they were flesh. But you see, the, God is a spirit. So if you're going to be in the image and likeness of God, number one, you've got to be spirit. Adam and Eve were not spirit beings. They were flesh. The Bible called them living souls. It's not the same thing as the word spirit. Check it out. Study it carefully. Spirit. The spirit. When God says we are spirit beings, he is he is qualifying us with himself. Not lesser spirits, 
but spirit beings as he is. That's why John could boldly tell us in 1 John chapter 4, it says, as he is, so are we in this world. See? You need to understand this. This is not the same thing with Adam. So when you say, Adam fell, okay, Adam fell. So Jesus came to restore us to what Adam was. That's not true. Jesus didn't come to restore us to what Adam was. Jesus came to fulfill his ministry, which is to give us life, to give men life, to bring, forth, bring us forth into that same place as God, in his image and in his likeness. That's the mission of Jesus. So why did he have to die? Of course, the passageway to life is death. <clears throat> yeah, the passageway to life is death. So to do that, he had to, now, ah, Masha, to, to bring forth life to us, he had to defeat death. He had to nullify death that we may live. I said, what do you mean by that? Was it not the sin of man that brought death? No, 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 no. Remember, before Adam and Eve ever sinned, God had told them, the day you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. That's to tell you that there was death in existence even before Adam and Eve were created. So he said, the day you eat of this tree, you will become a victim of the spirit of death. That's what God was telling them. You will become a, a victim of the spirit of death. The day you eat of this tree, you have given your right and power over unto death. And death now can have power over you. Ah, I, I pray you understand. This, this praise God. So, oh, oh, no, we... Eh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We're talking about angels. Let's not, let's not go off. <laughs> you know, you know I got, I've got to bring myself. Because when I get into these lines, I can, I can just go off from here. Praise God. So, I said, angels are ministering spirits. They are giving to us to guide us unto salvation. So, it's an angel that made you go to that service, watch that TV program, found that tract, met that person. Who preached the word of God to you and you believed. It's an angel that was causing you know, some. There are some of us who it took us a while to believe Jesus. See? So what, what do you think was going on? Here little was being added, here little was, was, was being created. The angels were creating opportunity. You met, you saw something that you just felt, man. This is proof that God exists. You saw all those things. You saw miracles. You know, maybe you went for meetings. You saw real life miracles. Or you saw someone who, who lived a life before you. were like, whoa. This guy is a true believer. Those things are the activities of angels behind the scene. Because they are fixing your life, setting the path for your life to inherit salvation. Until the day... You came to that awareness that truly Jesus is Lord. Angels were walking behind the scene. And the moment you get, got born again, guess what? You now came into a new place. And that's what we read in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. It says you have come to a, a, a place where you have innumerable, uncountable, uncountable number of angels. What are they doing there? Praise God. What are all these angels doing? He's not talking about in heaven. You know, it's in heaven. You want to say, man, in heaven, everywhere is full, filled with angels. But he's talking about in, here on earth. Ah. Do you know how many angels are around us? Do you know? Do you know how much angels we, we carry around when we move? You don't know. That's why you don't put them to work. Now, you remember even in the Old Testament, Elijah and his servants. The servant cried out and said, Master, we are surrounded. You know the story, the Syrian army had come to surround them, to arrest Elisha. And Elisha told him, fear not. Those that are with us are more than those that are with them. The servant was inside, you don't understand. We are surrounded. And then the master prayed. He says, Father, open the eyes of this young man so that he would see. Because angels are spirit beings. The Syrian soldiers are physical beings. 
And then when he prayed that prayer, God answered and opened the eyes of the servant. And the servant looked and saw what he saw, he screamed. <laughs> the whole mountains were surrounded by another army. Those are angelic beings. They were there all the time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It wasn't Elisha that prayed that God should send them now. They were there. I'll tell you something about this tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Because our time is up right now. Listen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You will see help from angels this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye.